Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady, where regular people get mistaken as employees when they aren't. Guys, I hope you're having another great day today. And listen, you've seen the title, a Karen is about to learn a lesson that she'll never forget. So with that said, there's going to be three stories today that are absolutely ridiculous. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride, my friends. And remember to hit that subscribe button if you aren't already. Let's dive in. So there's been a few times when people have stopped me to ask if I work here or I work there, but I've always been able to say, no, sorry, and that's always the end of it. But today, that wasn't the case at all. This is one of the ordeals that never actually happens in the real world, or so I thought. And this is what actually happens when things get out of hand. So a little bit of background about me. I am a bodybuilder slash powerlifter, and nutrition is very important to what I do. Whenever I go shopping, I like to check the nutrition labels on the ingredients and foods that I'm interested in. That way, I can eat enough food to not be hungry without sacrificing flavor, and still fit it into my daily calorie intake. So, as you can imagine, I will check multiple different versions of the same ingredients in an aisle, and put them back as I search for the best option. Well, earlier today, I went on a pretty big restock for the house. I also found a bunch of new recipes that I want to try, and some which called for some ingredients that I don't work with often. For the most part, the store wasn't too busy, and nobody really bothered me as I walked up and down each aisle. I also had some earbuds in, and my phone out, with my shopping list on it. So as I'm looking through the spices in the baking aisle, I can hear someone yelling over my music. It was kind of surprising since I listened to it pretty loud. So I took an earbud out and looked around, and this lady just said to me, I can't believe they let employees wear these stupid things. How are you supposed to hear anybody? I cut her off and said, uh, I wouldn't know because I don't work here. And this seemed to upset her greatly, as she got really aggressive, and she responded by saying, Don't lie to me. I just saw you stocking these shelves. I'm a paying customer, and you need to help me right now. Now, I'm a very easygoing guy. But when a random stranger speaks to me like this, I'm not going to put up with it. So I said, I don't have to do anything, especially if you talk to me like that. Get lost. So the lady then yells, excuse me? I just turned around to walk away at that point. And all of a sudden, she grabs the back of my shirt and I yank myself away screaming, don't touch me. She takes a couple of steps back, probably realizing that I'm not the kind of person you want to pick a fight with. She says, fine then. I'm finding a manager. Say goodbye to your job, you lazy, useless, good-for-nothing idiot. Now, I wasn't even wearing what employees at the store wear. Like, how could I possibly be mistaken for an employee? I seriously can't stress enough how much I don't look like I work there. A couple of minutes later, I'm in the next aisle over, and I see her again with a manager. I don't hear what she's saying, because I've got my music on, but with the way she was pointing her finger, I'd imagine she was probably saying that I'm the one who didn't help her. They start walking up, and I took both earbuds out this time. The manager approaches me, and I can hear the lady saying, He should be fired for cussing at me and threatening me. So the manager takes one look at me and says, He's not one of our employees. And she did not like that answer. She says, Then why is he stalking your shelves? I tell her because I'm looking at the labels. She stands there for a moment with this expression on her face that looked like her brain didn't process what I just said. Then she got surprisingly calm. It was getting kind of pathetic at that point, at least I thought so. But then the manager turns to me and says, Listen, I know you don't work here, but I can't have anybody assaulting people in my store. I'm sorry, but you have to leave. Whoa, what? So I must have missed that part where she said that I assaulted her. So I asked him to repeat himself, and he explains that if I don't leave right now, the police could get involved. The lady goes from pissed to real smug, like I'm about to get it. I then said, good, call them down here. I will wait. Now, I know this store has security cameras on every aisle, and I'm so sick of people like her getting away with this level of entitlement. So I really did wait. They end up calling the police, and they show up a few moments later. We go to a back office in the store, and they are really grilling me, asking why I would attack somebody, if I was on drugs, etc. Apparently, the lady told them that I had roid rage and assaulted her when she merely asked me a simple question. I told them, look at the security footage, it'll answer all of your questions. Finally, they leave the room, and I just wait there patiently for about 45 minutes. They come back and apologize after checking the footage. 
they know they can't really say or do much about it since they made some pretty big assumptions. The officer then says, if you'd like, you can press charges against her since she did grab you according to the security footage. And you know what? I said that I would love to press charges. Normally I don't like to waste my time dealing with courts, but hours of my day were already wasted today, and I want her to know that she can't get away with it. A few minutes later, the manager offers to let me just go home with my groceries for free. Probably a bit scared that I might sue the store for discrimination or something, since I was ready to press charges on the lady. On my way out, I saw them putting her into a back of a police car, and she was screaming profanities at the officers. I've already talked to an attorney, who's in the process of obtaining the security footage. Court date is gonna be in March, but should be pretty straightforward since the evidence is in my favor. I've never actually had to press charges like this before, so I have no idea what to expect. All I know is that even if she ends up getting only fined a dollar, or has to do even a minute of community service, I'll have a smile on my face. So I can't believe the manager would just take her word for it, and automatically assume that OP assaulted her just because he looked intimidating. They could have easily just went to the back, checked the cameras, and get the story straight before calling the cops. Or even ask somebody that was around. I'm so glad that OP stood his ground though. Shame on that woman for lying and accusing OP of having roid rage. What a, what a silly, silly woman for saying something like that. He's big, so he must have roid rage. And he attacked me. So, I've had a friend since college who's a great guy. Now, I love him to pieces, but I've occasionally considered ending the friendship because his wife is so jarringly dumb. For the life of me, I don't know what he gets from her. Okay, maybe I do. She's one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in real life, but even still, I don't know how he does it. His wife is really sweet and she means well, but there are sandwiches that are more intellectually stimulating. So a while back, I had a friend visiting named Camden, and she was dropping her kids by to hang out with mine. I invite her to stay for a bite to eat, because yeah, she's kinda dumb, but she's perfectly friendly and great to be around. So Camden's been trying to break into acting, and he recently had a big part on a TV medical drama. So I brought it up saying, Camden just recently had a small role as a doctor on this show. And she goes, ah, oh, that's so exciting, congratulations. That must not be easy to get a job there. So, what kind of doctor are you? Camden explained saying, Oh, it was a very minor role. I didn't get a specialty or anything, and I don't even think they gave me a name. And she just laughed and went, Well, we all feel that way when we first start, regardless of what job. Just keep working hard and you'll get all that stuff over time. But don't sell yourself short. It's not easy to be a doctor. And he took the compliment and went into how he played the role. So she then cuts him off and goes, Actually, you know what? If you wouldn't mind, my son actually has this oblong cyst developing on the small of his back. It's been there for a couple of weeks now. I'd really appreciate it if you could take a look. So we both laughed, thinking she was joking, and I was impressed with her uncharacteristically high-level joke. But then she started to call her son over. Camden, confused and weirded out by the whole thing, started saying, Oh, no, um, yeah, they didn't teach us any medical stuff for that part. I can't, like, help you with this. So then I jumped in and changed the subject, but she left shortly after. So I thought I'd let it be, even though she seemed kind of miffed when she left. Later, she came back to pick her kids up, and by then, Camden had gone home. As she was leaving, she remarked, You know, that was very rude of your friend to not at least look at my son's cyst. It would have taken him like 10 seconds. I hate how doctors think they're above helping anybody unless they're getting a check. Don't they, like, take an oath to always help someone who needs medical advice or something? So, as I processed the pure bitterness in her voice, I realized that she genuinely and truly thought that Camden was a medical doctor. So, convinced I must be misunderstanding her, I further reiterated and said, Oh no, no, he's an actor. He played a doctor. On that show. You know, you've seen that show. Now, this show is not some small production. It's like Grey's Anatomy, or House. Everybody knows of it. And now even angrier, she says, Of course I have. I know all about it. It's one of the best hospitals in the country. Why do you think they put it on TV? Being in the spotlight like that, you'd think he'd try to be a little bit more professional with people. That's all I'm saying. So the surreal mix of entitlement and delusion in her statement left me dumbstruck. And I decided that I must be misinterpreting this somehow. Because there was no way that any grown adult who votes, drives, works, and has kids of her own is that dense. Not even her. 
so I just let her leave, rather than risk offending her or embarrassing myself. As soon as she was gone, I called my friend, her husband, to try to catch him before she was home. I relayed the whole series of events to him, and his response was, Oh, that, yeah, <laughs> that's a problem, but it's not entirely her fault. Oftentimes, those shows use stories ripped from headlines of actual news, you know? So you can see why she gets mixed up sometimes. She bumped into Camden at my anniversary party not too long after, and asked him with genuine concern if a doctor on the show who'd been in an accident, again, on the show, was recovering well. So he tried telling her in plainer terms that, I, I don't work here, I'm not a doctor, I just played one that one time. And she said she was so sorry to hear that he'd been let go. And where was he working now? So if you're wondering how dumb she is, she's actually not. She has a bachelor's degree from a college and holds a job with several subordinates, and she has partial responsibility over our city's water supply. So yeah. Guys, what a wild story. Now, I want to believe it, but at the same time, it sounds like such a ridiculous story. I mean, some doctor shows, I guess, look real, but how does she not think they were actors? I love this comment right here about the water supply, though. This person says, Partial responsibility over your city's water supply. Uh, what city is this? And this person says, Flint, Michigan, is my guess. Oh, that's so bad. You have to give her a little bit more credit than that. So, I was working for Toys for Tots in the DC area which is a program the Marine Corps runs every year, to gather toys and distribute them to kids, whose Christmas tree would likely disappoint Charlie Brown. Sexist or not, they seem to pick those of us who have the Marine look, in the casting sense. Guys would be tall and masculine, and on the lady side, they would have that particular blend of I'll kick your ass with one hand while doing my eyeliner with the other. So point being, we're a bunch of tall and very fit yucks out there in dress blues smiling and coaxing toys out of people who could have probably saved Toys R Us with petty stock earnings. We look nothing like waitstaff. Myself and another SNCO were assigned to an event at the Smithsonian. Now I stand at about 6 foot 1, 210 pounds, and her probably 5 foot 4, 135 pounds. Anyway, we're smiling our pearly whites while the various movers and doers shake our hands, posing in front of toy displays for the cameras. The initial wave of donations pass as the event gets down to business. The drinks are then passed out and they then start in with the hors d'oeuvres. So we're standing there munching and trying not to get those godforsaken white gloves dirty when this lady who's best described as a chubby female Steve Buscemi comes toddling up in a dress that looked like it was screaming for mercy from the button fairy. Karen says, hey you, you too, I'm dry here, let's get snappy with a refill. Now, she's snapping her fingers at us. After a second of us not replying, she says, Hey, I know you can hear me. Get your ass in gear. Flirting time is over. Now, at this point, we realize that she meant us. I look over at Pocket, who's my fellow Marine. That's her nickname. And she looks at me, and we look at this lady. And it took a second. And then I finally speak and said, Uh, can I help you, ma'am? She says, It's about goddamn time. I need a refill. And while you're at it, get me some of those munchy things. They stopped bringing them out a few minutes ago. You guys really sh- Now, I interrupt her and said, Ma'am, I'm sorry, but we don't work here. We're just here for toys for tots. She says, I don't give a good goddamn what you think. Get your ass in gear, or I will have your job. I will not be talked at by someone like you. Now, at this point, I'm thinking, wow. The woman then proceeds to toss her empty-ish glass at P who gets some leftover drips on her blues, but catches it at a reflex. Now, I can see the thunder clouds gathering. A stain like that likely means that she's looking at a brand new blues coat, which runs a few hundred bucks. Probably a new ribbon setup too. Now, my partner Pocket is Puerto Rican, and she has the feisty temper to match. So I try to head the lady off before Pocket takes matters into her own hands. I said, ma'am, we're not waitstaff, we're just here for toys for tots. And she says, I don't want to hear your excuses, and you won't want to know who my husband is. She then proceeded to march right up to me and put her finger right under my nose and continue the tirade. Apparently her husband was a southern senator's main campaign funder, and she would see to it that I would be sleeping under newspaper after she's done with me. So after about 10 odd seconds of this, we're starting to draw stairs, and some of the staff were starting to head our way. However much I wanted to put this woman in a compliance hold, I could pretty well visualize the CNN article if a male marine laid hands on a woman in front of all of these people, especially a politically connected one. 
I was sort of at a loss. But fortunately for me, I did not have to make that choice. My partner Pocket made it for me. Pocket comes in and says, Ma'am, you need to calm down. Please take your glass and the woman immediately switches her wrath from me to Pocket and slaps the glass out of Pocket's hands. Now, I could see Pocket's control wavering, but there wasn't anything for it. The lady continues her tirade, and the critical mistake was to start jabbing Pocket with her finger, right in the chest, with each word. Karen says, You shut your mouth, or I'll have you deported. You will serve me, you damn. And then she says a slur. Now, I cringed visibly at that last word because, yeah, I knew exactly what was about to happen, and it did. As soon as my partner Pocket heard the last word that came out of the woman's mouth, she lost it. Now, it's called Udegatame in Judo. It's basically a standing arm lock. And Pocket was a two-tab black belt. Pocket snatched her arm up, locked her out, and slammed her, face first, into a wall right next to us. There was blood, a broken nose, drywall dust, the whole bit. And Pocket did not even say anything. Just that smile that says, I'ma mess you up so hard that your grandkids will be born with my handprints on their soul. It was awesome. So I being the senior marine and somewhat cooler of temperament, carefully pull Pocket back. I dare say it was akin to handling a small but very dangerous animal. The woman kinda slides to the floor, actually much quieter now that she's trying to aspirate a mixture of blood and gypsum. Security finally showed up to help, which resulted in them having to haul the woman away, and taking us to separate rooms, where we gave our version of things. Security footage was reviewed, and so on, and Pocket wanted to press assault charges, but oddly enough, no DC police became involved. I'm assuming politics at play here. I called the head shed to let them know what happened. Funny enough, it never seemed to make it to the news. I think that, more than anything, saved Pocket's ass. Upon coming back to the main event area to load the toys and take down the display, we were given a wide berth by many of the upper crusties. I do feel compelled to mention the notable exception, this one old lady who comes up to us and asked if she could give Pocket a hug, of all things. Just kind of gave her that grandma-style hug, pats her on the back and took her hands and says, You know, in my younger years, I would have stomped that woman flat. Wonderfully done, dear. And then she wandered off to rejoin the party. It was adorable. Oh my goodness. So somebody please tell me how in the world this lady thought it was such a good idea to poke a marine in the chest while berating them and being a freaking racist. The entitlement was definitely super strong with this Karen, and she clearly thought that she was invincible with her rich and powerful husband. Well, all I can say is that Pocket humbled her up real quick. Hopefully, I think. Probably learned a lesson. But at the same time, I I'm not really sure because she's a Karen. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here, lady. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today again. And I hope you guys enjoy the stories. If you missed the last episode, I will link it right here. A woman breaks into a police impound lot to steal back her car. It's such a fun story, guys. So check it out if you missed it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.